This is a quick demo of how to use Pulse View to uh, be a logic analyzer on your PC. Uh, so I've got all my my wires instrumented to my display here, and my display is sending uh, data and uh, a, a clock pulse through the enable pin uh, back and forth. So I've, I've grabbed all the relevant um, pins for my my display, and then also connected it to my my logic analyzer that's hooked up to my computer. So um, yeah, I mean, that, that's about it. So we, we come over to Pulse View. Uh, I already ran it once in the background. Um, uh, key items here are the, the clock speed. So this would be as quickly as something could possibly transition. Uh, in this case, my clock speed is 3 megahertz for this processor. Uh, so I chose 3 megahertz. It, it's unlikely that it would actually ch change, you know, at 3 megahertz, but uh, that's a pretty safe option in that unless uh, you need perhaps uh, more data points than you can um, record. Uh, five million data samples will get us uh, at least uh, one set of data packets uh, because I'm changing what's on the display every second. Uh, so I'll run it again just so we see that happen. And in here we see you know, a whole lot of you know, stable da data and then a, a period of transition. This is when we went through and, and sent all our, our data. So you can you can zoom in on that area and see that you know it contains multiple you know sets of data. So uh, over here we've got I, I labeled these you can you can double click and, and change the label and the color and you can also even do a trigger uh, uh, which would mean that it wouldn't capture data until something happened on that clock. Uh, so if you're waiting for a specific instance uh, that is a, a good thing to do. Uh, so over here, uh, the very first message I send, uh, I can see my RF pin is, is low, which means it's a, an instruction in this case is to, to move the cursor. Uh, when E goes low, it locks in the data, which means I've saved uh, 1, 0, 0, 0 as my data bits. And then E goes low again to lock in the last four data bits of 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. So the full 8-bit message is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Uh, as an 8-bit number uh, based on the communication style of this display that locks in two 4-bit numbers back-to-back uh, -back on the, the falling edge of the enable bit pin. Uh, so when, when RS goes high, uh, we are now transitioning to sending data. In this case, we're going to send hello. And you can see uh, this is likely the H, this is likely the E, this is the L, uh, L0, uh, O, and then uh, moving the cursor again. Uh, I, actually, I, I send sorry, I, I send for uh, uh, five spaces to clear off the display, and then I send five um, H E L L O over here. So um, well, you can't even see that. This is the second group of data, which is actually writing hello again. So uh, I, I clear off the display uh, by writing spaces, move the cursor, and then send uh, hello again. So you can measure the time between you know these, and and uh, you can see that there's some some data transitions here that maybe don't make sense, but that's just uh, your code, uh, and my code changing pins, trying to get them in alignment by by executing C statements. So the only thing that matters uh, is when the the clock is falling uh, on the enable pin. So any other of these data transitions don't actually uh, get recorded by the display which is good because um, you, you only want the display to record data when you have, you know, finally stabilized uh, your message. So, um, you know, happens very quickly and then, you know, a long period of nothingness uh, and then, you know, the entire cycle repeats itself over here. So you can, you know, decode any of these messages and find out uh, if anything is not working. Uh, so if you see any of these lines, uh, so these bottom six lines are the only ones I'm using. But if I happen to be using, you know, this pin up here, uh, and we saw that, you know, it, it's a solid line the entire time. That's the warning sign that's, you know, um, perhaps those pins are not set up correctly. And then uh, should, you know, everything be moving around correctly and you see, you know, the correct uh, like format the data lines are transitioning correctly. Uh, I see the correct you know lock-in of data on my enable pin. 
No, I see the correct transition for uh, whether or not it's a command or a, a data line uh, data transmission. If all those look good, then you actually have to come in and start decoding uh, individual pieces of data to see if you're sending the right message uh, or the, the intended message. So here we're sending a 0110 followed by 0101. Uh, and this is a data communication because RS is high, which is uh, how this can, um, display works. So if you go out to like ASCII table, oh, I was a little off on that one. I'm not sure if you saw the full message because it was a little off screen. Um, yeah, 0110, 0101. And uh, if you go out to ASCII table.com, this should decode as a, a capital H. So uh, yeah, that is, that is how to use the Pulse View um, analyzer. Uh, you do need to, to set up your pins to match up with the pins that are on your board, um, but everything's uh, color coded to help you out with that, uh, assuming you choose the right layers, and then you can name these and, and make your uh, graph pretty pretty intelligible, and you can figure out what what you actually are sending, even if your your software looks correct.